Hello, good morning, and welcome to our presentation uh, for our civic engagement project, which is the LDES course curriculum. My name is Ethan Fogel. I use he, him, his pronouns, and I serve at Interfaith Outreach Community Partners in Plymouth. Hi, my name is Grayson. I use he, him, his pronouns, um, and I serve at Lindale Neighborhood Association. Hi, my name is Grace Murphy Malone. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I work at the Harmony Learning Center. Hi, my name is Shelby Gunderson. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I serve at Project for Prime Living. All right, so what is LDES? What does it stand for? Well, LDES is an acronym that stands for English Learner Digital Essential Skills. And uh, we chose this name first and foremost. Uh, well, we thought it was uh, honestly a very catchy sounding name. We wanted to find something that we liked. And the field of adult basic education is full of these acronyms. And we wanted LS to be no exception. We believe that the meaning is straightforward. It encapsulates the audience that we're trying to teach and the subject we're teaching. It's digital essential skills for English learners. And we also wanted to keep the uh, meaning somewhat open-ended. Uh, the curriculum style can be explained in simple concepts. We're looking to teach the essentials, but for those who work with technology, you know that this uh, term essentials can be difficult to define. So um, as the course improves and evolves, we wanted to keep that meaning open-ended. Thinking about who is Eldis for, um, so we created it for mid-intermediate English language learner students, um, for uh, mostly for people who with no prior computer exposure. So um, they're unaware of how to navigate or um, uh, communicate with the computer. Um, and we wanted to hone in on one specific level. Um, so we use Blue Book standards. Um, it's called College and Career Readiness Standards for Adult Education by Susan Pimentel. Um, and we focused on two different um, kind of sets of standards. So we use column B, reading and writing standards. Um, and this is typically corresponds with uh, second or third grade level. And then also column A, um, which focuses on speaking and listening and language standards, um, which typically corresponds with um, first grade level. Okay. And then um, th thinking about what's the difference between LDIS and North Star. Um, so LDIS is meant to be a precursor or used to supplement the first two North Star modules. So it's not meant to replace, it's meant to complement. Um, and we saw this need um, as we were teaching in our own sites, um, even though North Star states on their website that they built this, um, these assessments for um, ELL learners um, that are interme intermediate or higher, um, we still saw people struggling in our sites. Um, so we focused on the first two assessments, which is internet basics and basic computer skills. Um, so Elvis focuses on similar standards as North Star, um, but we kind of dive deeper into it. Speaking of topics, we're going to go into a little bit of the curriculum breakdown. Um, so we focus on we brought we broke it down into seven distinct units. Um, each unit has its own um, main broad topic. Here you see the first four. Um, each unit has approximately two to four lessons. It really varies on each unit. Um, all units in each lesson, right, um, has lesson plans, instructional materials, although it varies from lesson to lesson on what type of instruction material. Um, they have activities as well as assessments. Um, and each of these units was, uh, they were created, oh, sorry, can you go back a little bit, Lizzie? <laughs> Thank you. Each of these units was created um, with the purpose of using them independently, separately from each other. Um, so I'm just going to go over a very brief um, and broad 
uh, description of each unit. So unit one is our kind of intro to your computer, vocabulary, logging in. Unit two is our desktop, navigation, again, vocabulary. Unit three is all about our mouse. Unit four is the keyboard. You can go to the next slide, Lizzie. Thank you. Um, here you see the uh, last three units in the curriculum. Unit five is our computer interfacing, so connecting to the internet, um, using apps and introduction to files, what they are. Unit uh, six is web browsers, again, what they are, how to use them. Uh, unit seven is actual internet navigation, as well as safety. This goes into search engines and account creation and signing in. Cool. Um, and then we did want to touch uh, as well on our material accessibility. Um, we wanted to encapsulate a broad range of learners as well as um, the way that teachers um, their their style of teaching, right? So there are a couple of things that we kept in mind. Uh, first of all, we made everything in an aerial font with a twenty two point. Um, we have very high contrasting colors in all of our Google Slides presentations um, and a lot of our materials. Uh, we also focus on metaphor-based uh, lessons. So this is more in terms of instead of just using a straight up definition of um, something, we would go for more of a metaphor um, to explain an idea. Uh, then we also, uh, for materials, we often have physical paperwork books, um, but that varies from lesson to lesson. Um, sometimes we have Google Slides or just um, uh, demonstrations to go through. Um, and then as well, we wanted to note that we do have standardized as well as action competency assessments. Okay, so when we started with our project, we focused initially on English second language students or ESL students, but then as we started working on the project, we realized that even though people may have had English as their first language, they may not have had the reading, language comprehension, and vocabulary skills needed to really make the most of the North Star curriculum. So we broadened what we were doing to include not just ESL students, but English language learner students or ELL students as well. And we also tailored the accessibility to include instructors as well as students, given that not every instructor that we worked with was as comfortable with digital literacy as we were. Now, some more things that we uh, learned as we were working on the curriculum. Um, some some things that we uh, decided were very important to us uh, that we were that some considerations. Um, we wanted to make a comprehensive uh, curriculum for ELL students, but one also that the facilitators uh, of any sites where this curriculum was would be able to uh, navigate the delivery with as much ease as possible. So in this regard, we implemented facilitator notes, handbook style curriculum and analogies. Um, the capacity, uh, we realized that we uh, had hit some limitations due to our responsibilities as CTEP outside of the project. We weren't able to create a full, as full a comprehensive curriculum as we wanted, but we created uh, something of a, um, a base, uh, something that was more of a starting point that we could get feedback on in the future, share with groups and take um, who could, uh, for future CTEP groups could take the project and improve it as they, as they will. And we do believe that there is a very strong future for this curriculum. And we are hoping that next year we can kind of build off of what we've done, hand it off to another CTEP group. And even before then, we're gonna be doing a Summer Institute presentation on August 18th. There is interest externally in this curriculum. And if we are able to hand it off next year, we are hoping to actually implement it in the classroom setting, work more one-on-one -on -one with instructors to change, tweak, and tailor the curriculum material, and even introduce digital interactiveness to the various lessons. 
And uh, we appreciate you taking the time to listen to our presentation. And uh, this is the part where we answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Gru. Once again, I will be, uh, yeah, reading out any questions that come through the chat. So audience, please craft those questions. And I hope members saw, we had some shout outs, just, uh, yeah, go Eldes, I'll say it. <laughs> I don't know why I got so nervous, but thank you for pronouncing it correctly. Um, Carly says, just what we need in AB, another acronym. Nikki says, good standards align curriculum. Lisa, I love that accessibility was so strongly considered. Mickey, this is really amazing. Allison, really fascinating. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Adriana has a question. Can sites get a copy of this curriculum? Also would like to get copies of these presentations. Um, yeah, that would eventually be the goal, you know, is to get sites the copies of the curriculum. Um, I, I think others could help me speak on this, but we're not sure if that we think the curriculum is at a spot where it's uh, going to be most effective. Uh, if we were to give it out to sites, um, you can definitely get a copy of the slides, though, 100%. Yeah, I think some feedback would definitely be appreciated before we actually implement it, but we would definitely be willing to hand out copies of it to sites that are interested to just get some feedback and just to see how it works. Yes, and talk about feedback. Lisa has a question here. Was there a process of getting feedback on the curriculum as it was developed? If so, what was that process like? I mean, I can take that one. Um, so uh, while it wasn't necessarily um, something that we focused on while we were creating the curriculum. We did work with Nikki Olalde, um, especially at the start, to kind of get an understanding of um, ELL um, standards and where we should go and focus on, um, which is a big shout out to Nikki. Thank you so much. Um, as well as in our own classroom settings, when we were working one-on-one -on -one with participants or in a classroom setting, um, often we, we were I mean, I personally um, would use this in the classroom as well. Um, and I would tweak the curriculum as we would continue. Thanks, group. Other questions? Way to be helpful, Nikki. Carly says, I love the focus that was taken to align with CCRS and North Star. Yes, Lisa, that's so great. I'm excited to see where this goes. Seems like a great resource. Do any of you want to speak a little bit more about, um, well, you talked about the inspiration, obviously, you know, you working with learners on site, but what else would you, you know, Maybe there's someone who really is excited and wants to take this forward. Um, and Allison has a question, what have been your learner responses to the curriculum? Um, I can take that one again. Um, so at least the latter one. Um, so the learner responses, um, again, since we haven't um, officially implemented this in the classroom. We haven't been getting really learner responses, um, but as I've been using some of these uh, materials and these lesson uh, plans in my classroom, I've been getting like really great feedback from students, um, especially appreciative of the metaphor-based definitions on ideas rather than um, just like the straight up definition of things um, and using analogies and stuff like that um, have been really helpful in the classroom. Um, in terms of bringing this into another year, um, even though I won't be part of CTAP next year, um, this is something that I'm going to continue to be working on um, both in and out of the classroom, volunteering some of my time as well to continue, to continue working with this. Excellent. And I feel like another question came up based on that, something about, it's gone gone. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I had another question. That's okay. Any last question from the audience here? For our elders group. Oh, could you give an example? This is my question. Could you give an example of one of these analogies? 
Yes, I think Grace, I, I like one of your mouse analogies. Can you can you say that? Um, one of the yeah, sure one of the analogies that I gave was to explain Bluetooth, uh, the ability to connect a mouse via Bluetooth to a computer is that the mouse has a teeny tiny little radio inside of it that it's using like a little walkie talkie to talk to the computer and the computer has its own little radio that it listens to. So using that kind of analogy, especially with because a lot of the instructors, they'll know what a radio is. They'll be able to help their students and say, even if you know if the student doesn't know what a radio is, they'll say, oh, this is what a radio is. This is how that works. So taking things like that and then just simplifying it down and saying like, oh, the cursor, it's your way of pointing to things to get the computer's attention. Establishing that, oh, the computer's just kind of trying to listen to what you're trying to do and this is how it's listening and watching for what you're doing. Just kind of building those skills in a way that's metaphorical. Excellent. Well, Another round of applause. Thank you so much. And yes, a note about slides, you know, we will be sharing it out with attendees and it will be on our website. And this recording today will go on YouTube. Um, excellent. Let me. Thank you guys. Yep.